We thank You that we'd be overwhelmed with Your touch. God, all that we've dreamed of and all that we're believing for, Lord, we know that it's impossible without You. But You told the disciples to go everywhere. You gave them a big, big vision and a big dream. You told them before they go everywhere, don't go anywhere. Wait until they're infused, until they're full of power from on high. And so God, today I pray that you would saturate us with your presence. I pray for those that are in the building today, maybe their first time ever in church. Those that are watching online, maybe their first time ever watching an online church service or any type of church service. I pray God that you'd go beyond my words and that you'd make yourself incredibly real to them. Make yourself real to us today. We want you to wrap your arms around us. I pray for those that are here today that are lonely. Lord, that you'd wrap your arms around them and they'd feel and know that they are family. Use us, we pray. Use us, we pray, God, in a world that's hurting, in a world that has so much confusion. We just pray, God, that you would bring clarity of who you are your presence and your purpose, you'd use us. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place, we pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen. Come on, let's give Jesus one great round of applause. Let's give it up for our band and our worship team. They did such a great job this morning. You can be seated. Trust that you're sitting beside somebody unbelievably good looking today, especially if you're single. Welcome to Word of Life. It's great to have you with us today. Again, if you are visiting or your first time, we're so glad to have you here. My name is John, and it's my privilege to be uh, the lead pastor here and lead this church with my wife, Anna, and a great team of pastors and leaders and deacons and trustees and staff and volunteers and people, and welcome home. It's great to have my in-laws here, Pastor John and Eva Ponder, and uh, they are... They are responsible for Anna Rebecca, and I'm eternally grateful for that. <laughs> yeah, let's give him a big, you should be, she's, uh... Bible says this in Psalm 92, verse 12 to 14. It says, the righteous flourish like a palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They are ever full of sap. This is Vision Sunday 2022, and we are inviting you to be with us and this year to live planted. Live planted in the house of of the Lord. If you live planted in the house of the Lord, God promises you that you have a life that'll be fresh, that you have a life that'll be flourishing, that you have a life that'll be bearing fruit, that there'll be excitement in your life until the day that you go from here into eternity. It doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. There is no age limit on the kingdom of God. God wants to use you and use you to the day that He's finished with you. And the day that He's finished with you, you'll be standing before Him and you'll hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. Is there anybody in the house today that's excited about what God wants to do in their life? When I was a young Christian, I was told on multiple occasions to uh, uh, be still. And uh, I remember, I remember this Christian family I, I live with, they, they would often say this. They would say, uh, John, don't, don't try to run ahead of God. Don't try. Anybody ever, ever been told that before? Don't, don't try. Don't, don't run ahead of God. Well, the reality is you can run ahead of yourself. Like you cannot be ready. Uh, you can run ahead of yourself and you think that you can do things that, you know, that you, you can think that you're way beyond where you really are. You can run ahead of yourself. I've seen this happen in church where people have looked at what somebody else is doing and thought, well, that's really easy. A lot of, lot, lot of us do that. Oh, that job is easy. That, that would be easy to do until you do it. I remember that happened to me multiple times as a chef that I would be leading a kitchen 
And I have some staff member, I remember this specifically happened in New Zealand. We'd gone to plant the church. I was working uh, as well as planning the church in this restaurant. I had negotiated with the boss of the restaurant. He said, we'll give you more money as we, as you go on. I said, I don't need more money. I just need more time. I didn't come here to be a chef. I come here to plant a church. And so why don't you just keep paying me the same amount of money, but I'll just work less hours. And I'd work my way from going from a 48-hour week to a 20-hour week and still running the restaurant. And, but there was one person on staff that thought, well, that's going to be easy. He doesn't look that smart. I think I could do this. And so they created, you know, hassle for me. And, and so I ended up just, well, if you can do it, I don't need to do it, and resigned, walked away. And then after about a month, they called me back, we can't do this. Because it just make, you can make it look easy. And so some people make their job look easy. You think, oh, I could do that. So you can run ahead of yourself. But, but you, can't, you, you can't run ahead of God. How, how can you run ahead of God who's at the finish line while you're still at the start line? He's the alpha, the omega. He is the beginning and the end, and He is everything in between. He is who was and is and is to come. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is omnipresent. He is everywhere simultaneously. So while you're in the, while you're in the locker room putting your running shoes on, He's in the locker room with you putting the running shoes on. But while you're putting the running shoes on, if you look ahead, He's at the start line. He's at the start line while he's in the locker, putting, he's already at the start, you haven't got to the start line yet, he's at the start, he's at the start line, you still, and so you fight, you get your shoes on, and you get down on the start line, and you're there, and you look, and there he is at the start line, you think, this is awesome, he, you're there at the start line, he's there, and you look backwards, and there he's back in the locker room. That's unusual, he's in the locker room, and he's at the start line, what? He's at the finish line. He's at the finish line before you got to the start line and he's yet in the locker room because he's the same yesterday, today and forever. He is who was and is and is to come. He is the Alpha and he is the Omega. So you cannot outrun God. You cannot outrun God. He's already ahead of you before you've even started. The language of God is always taking us into bigger places than we've ever been before. He prophesies over us things. Said, he said to the early church, I want you to go to Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. I want you to think bigger than you've ever thought before. But I, I, I'm not asking you to do this on your own. I'm going to fill you with power. I'll pour out my spirit. Bible says in Ephesians, uh, sorry, in Acts chapter 2, verse 17 and 18, and in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. In the 30 years of plus ministry I've been involved in, I, I've learned that God has a mission. God has a plan. And I've, and I've learned that God uh, moves at a frenetic pace in His plan. The kingdom of God is always advancing. The kingdom of God is never retreating. It's always moving forward. And the thing about the kingdom of God moving forward is if you don't move with it, it will move on without you. One of the scariest things that I've learned as a leader is God's ability to just go next. It's scary. God's like, I have a mission. I have a journey. I'm on pace. I, I, I know where I'm heading. I know what I've got. He's way beyond where we are even at. While they're still in Jerusalem, he's at the uttermost parts of the earth. He's already thinking about things that are bigger. bigger. And God's like, I, I, I want you to get up with a program. I want you to get along. And God will move at a ferocious pace. Our responsibility is to move with Him. That's the excitement of our Christianity, is that God is moving forward. And we get the, the privilege of moving 
with him. The book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 to 21 says this, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Now to him, now to him, turn to the person beside you and go, now to him. Everything we're talking about today, everything we talk about on Vision Sunday is under him. It's all about him. We share the vision he's given us, but it's his vision. Every, everything that we do is under him. Word of life is not John and Anna Morgan's church. Word of life is not the deacon's church. That word of life is not the trustee's church. Word of life is not the assemblies of God of America's church. The word of God is God's church. This is Jesus' church. He owns his church. He gave himself for this church. Now, it may be our responsibility to build it, but it's still his church. It may be our responsibility to serve it, but it's still his church. It may be our responsibility to steward it. It may be our responsibility to finance it. It may be our responsibility to give our lives and give our time to see it grow. But at the end of the day, it is his church. We are the people Jesus was talking about in the parable of the talents, where there was a master. He gave out talents. He said, I'm going away for a while. See you later. Knock yourself out. Do something with that talent. And the master went away. We are in the season when the master has gone away. But there one day he's going to come back. One day he will stand before him and he's going to ask us, what did you do with what I gave you? As pastors, God handed us this facility. When I stand before God, I, I'm, I'm going to answer to God with, what did you do with the talent I put in your hand? Us as a generation here in 2022, God's going to ask us, what did you do? I, I handed this to you. What, do, what did you do with it? Did you double it? Did you go from five to 10? Did you go from two to four? Or did you play it safe and take your one and bury it in the ground and just got all conservative and like, oh, we don't want to change anything. We don't want to do anything. They just bury it in the ground. The result of the burying it in the ground, playing it safe mentality, that guy was called a what? A wicked and lazy servant. I, I don't know about you. I don't want to hear wicked and lazy in God's words to me when I stand before him in heaven. All I want to hear is the words, well done. You are a good and faithful servant. It's his vision. Now to him who is able. I love that. It's him who is able. That's the whole thing about the faith journey. I'm going to share some things today that I've got to be honest with you are a little scary. When you think about it in the natural, when you do the math, when you calculate it all out, you go, God, I, I'm not sure we're ready for this yet. But he is able. It's not faith unless we need God. It's not faith unless we need him to be involved. You may not feel like you are able, but God is able in you. He can do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond anything you could hope or think or dare to imagine through the power that's at work in you. It's His power at work in you. He is able. Now to Him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think. Here's the crazy thing about the walk with God. Whatever you can imagine, God is beyond it. Like it, it's not even a matter of like, don't outrun God. It, it's a matter of catching up to him. Like, like, like God's not playing catch up with us. We are playing catch up with God. And no matter how mind blowing, challenging, stretching it is to us, God is always beyond it. When we, God, God operates to us in different realms. And when we can understand how those realms play out, it, it, it makes it a little easier to understand how God uses vision in our church life and equally how God will use this in your life. This is not just a church thing. This is a personal thing. God operates in different dimensions. He communicates to us through different realms of time. The first realm of time is what I would call the foundational past. Now, now technically, 
everything is in the past. Even when I just said the word foundational past, the first time I said foundational past, that now is in the past. Even the word now, even that word I just said a minute ago, that now was not now, it's in the past. So God operates in our foundational past. All vision, every vision is moving to the past. So, so even while we can see it, at some point what we can see is at some point going to be in the past. And so we need to understand that. In my office, uh, in one of the cupboards up there, I came across some blueprints. And the blueprints are the design for the chapel that you see out here. Well, the chapel was built in the past. But at some point, that was in the future. When they laid those blueprints out, when Pastor Cova laid those blueprints out on a table and got builders and leaders to gather around and, and, and see this vision that they had before them, to them, this is awesome. They're going to build a chapel, and the chapel was built before this auditorium. That plan was built before this. And as soon as they got the vision for this, the chapel was in the past. And so the foundational past is an important part of our, of our life because it, it brings us to where we're at right now. We are living on the foundations of the past. And every, in the kingdom of God, every untold story is working its way into history. All the things that God hasn't done yet, all the stories that we haven't heard, all the testimonies that haven't been revealed are working towards being history. But the foundational past is something that we need to be able to celebrate. We need to be grateful of the men and women that have gone before us. But here's the thing, you don't honor the men and women of the past by living in it. You only honor them by building on it. They didn't build a, 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 a dream to go, well, this is where we're going to camp. We're going to stay here forever. Because if you do that, God's like, well, you can stay there forever, but I'm not. I'm moving forward. I'm, I, I'm building the kingdom of God and I'll jump over you and find somebody else that will run with me. God is always looking for people to run with him. And so we honor the past. We're grateful for the past. We have everything here today because somebody in the past paid for your seat. Somebody in the past paid for this building to be built. Somebody in the past purchased this property. Everything we have today has been built on the foundational past. And so the past was great. The past should be celebrated. The past should be honored. But the past is the past. It's good. It was great. But you don't want to live there. Then there's the present season. So there's the foundational past, and then God deals with us in the present season. We are in this season because of a result of the past. But the good news is it's only a season. So if it's not a good season at the moment, don't worry. It's only a season. It's not going to last. It's never God's intention for it to last. You're going to move on to the next season. God deals with us in seasons. Sometimes there's a season of winter. I don't love winter. It's my most unfavorite season. Even when I know winter is coming, I'm not excited about winter. I try to rebel against winter as much as humanly possible until it's impossible to rebel against winter any longer. But as the days got shorter, now they're getting longer. I'm thinking spring is on the way. And every day when the temperature goes up a little bit, I'm like, it's spring. And people are like, no, it's global warming. But it sounds like spring. God is taking everything that has happened in the past and realigning everything to move forward into the future. John chapter 4, verse 37 and 8 says, For here the saying holds true, one sows, another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labors. So we are in the driver's seat right now. And if you notice in the vehicle, the windshield is massively bigger than the rear view mirror. And it's dangerous to drive your car forward with your eyes consistently in the rear view mirror. Now the rear view mirror is there to remind us what's behind us. What's behind us. But the windshield is there to give us plenty of vision so we can see what's in front of us. 
And so often this present season, maybe it's not a great season where you can go, okay, I, I, I don't like where I've been. I'm not really loving where I'm at, but God gives you a vision so you can move into the future. You don't have to stay in that season. That season is not your destiny. It's just a season and it will pass. So there's our past. There's our present season. And then the next part that God deals with us is what you would call your articulated vision. A vision is something that you can describe. Habakkuk 2 verse 2 says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so he who may run who reads it. A a vision is something you don't presently have, but you have a plan and a strategy on how you're going to get there. A vision is something you don't presently have, but you have a you have an idea. You have you have mapped it out. You're like if we t- it going back to that the blueprints on the desk of the chapel. This is what it's going to look like. This is how tall it's going to be. This is what the seats are going to look like. There was a there was a blueprint on the table. That's what a vision is. Well, where where's the chapel? We don't have it yet, but here's the blueprint on what it's going to look like when we achieve that vision. So you move from one season into the future, and then that future that you're moving into will become the present season and eventually become the past. But the past begins with a vision, and the vision begins with a strategy. So we have an articulated vision, and then we have an unexplainable dream. The thing about a dream is it's something you can see, but you don't really know what it is. You step out by faith. Abraham left where he was, the comfort zone, to go for a city he had no idea what it was like. He left everything he had, the comforts of home, parents, family, safety, security, everything. He just walked out to go somewhere. Everyone's like, where are we going? He's like, I don't really know. That way. Well, what's going to happen there? He said, I see good things. What are the good things? I don't know. It's a dream. A dream is something you can see. A dream is something you can see, but you can't really describe it. So Joseph is like, I know one day I'm going to be important. One day I'm going to be so important that that you guys are all going to bow down and acknowledge how important I am. And his brothers were like, well, how that's going to happen? I don't really know. He didn't have any idea. He couldn't explain it. He couldn't have gone into detail. If it was a vision, he could have had detail. If it was a vision, he could be like, well, I'll tell you exactly how it's going to happen. You guys already hate me because I'm dad's favorite son. We can tell I'm the favorite son because I have the Technicolor dream coat. I'm wearing whoa, 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 and you're wearing beige. <laughs> One day you guys are going to be out in the field. And dad's going to send me out on a lunch errand. I'm going to come and you're going to see me afar off. Why? Why are you going to see me? Because this great jacket's going to be blazing in the sun. Wow, wow, wow. You're going to see me and you're going to conspire to kill me because you're so angry at me. You hate everything about me. You think, we're going to kill him. And then you think, oh, let's not kill him. Let's sell him into slavery. We get rid of him. He'll die and we'll make money at the same time. This is a win-win. You'll sell me into slavery. I'll go into Potiphar's house. I'll work really, really hard. So hard that he promotes me, holds nothing back from me. But then his wife is going to have the hots for me because I'm such a cool looking guy. And she's going to come up to me like, hello, hey, Joe, do you want to give it a go? And I'm going to go, no. And I'm going to run. She's going to grab me by the toga. Take it off. I'm going to have nothing on but a smile. Running down the street next thing. Woo, 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 woo. The police are going to come and they're going to arrest me. going to throw me into jail. When I'm in jail, I'm going to meet the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker. And they're going to have dreams. I'm going to be able to interpret their dreams. And when they go, I'll say, don't forget me, but then they're going to forget me and leave me in the jail to rot. But then one day, Pharaoh's going to have a dream about seven fat cows, seven skinny cows. He's going to go around to everybody in the kingdom and say, what does this dream mean? They go, no, no, no. And then they're going to remember me in the jail. They're going to pull me out and I'm going to go, seven good years followed by seven bad years. And he's going to go, you are really smart. He's going to promote me to the number two guy in the city. I'm going to rule and reign the country. Then one day the drought hits and you guys are going to be looking around, trying to find something to eat. Where there's something to eat, you're going to open the refrigerator. Nothing in there but air. Gonna look around, and so you're gonna come down to our kingdom. Please give me something to eat, and you don't even know it's me. But I'm gonna sit on the throne and look at you. <laughs> I'm gonna think about killing you. No, I'm gonna forgive you because what you meant for evil, God meant for good, and I'm gonna reveal myself to you. You're gonna go, Whoa. He had no idea. He had no idea. He had no idea how that's gonna happen. Just like one day, 
One day I know I'm going to be a big thing, but I just don't know how it's going to happen. Now, Pharaoh had a dream. Pharaoh had the seven fat cow, seven skinny cow dream. And he went to everybody. He's like, I have a dream. What does it mean? That we don't know. And he brought Joseph out. People called Joseph the dreamer, but really Joseph was the strategist. Because he was able to come out and go, seven good years followed by seven bad years. Here's what you need to do in the good years. You need to store it up. When the seven bad years come, you'll be able to make bank in recession. So he took Pharaoh's dream and made it a vision. The seven good years came, the seven bad years came, the vision became a season. And now we talk about it as something that happened in the past. This is how God operates in his kingdom, this is how God operates with us. You're in a present season, but he wants to give you a vision. A vision you can explain how you're going to get there. Some of the young people here have a vision of what they want to, I'm going to go to college. Which college? This is the college. How are you going to get there? They have a vision. Have they graduated yet? No. My wife just a few years ago had a vision to do a doctorate in leadership. She had a vision. She had a, a stress. So we worked it out and now she's just a few months away from graduating with a doctorate. And we'll go there one day and celebrate. They'll hand it to her. We'll call her Dr. Anna. For you, that's only on Sunday. For me, every day, every day. Good morning, Dr. Anna. Can I have a cup of coffee, Dr. Anna? Should we go shopping, Dr. Anna? But at some point, that moves from being a vision to the season. And then she'll take on something else. That's how God operates. But here's the realm I love. It's the realm of unrevealed possibility. God is doing exceedingly abundantly beyond anything that we could hope or think. I would suggest to you that before you can think about it, God's already beyond it. And as soon as you can think about it, God is beyond it. So if you, th if you think about, about it like this, like you're, 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 you're here, this is your present season, you're living here, you, your whole life is spent on teal carpet, you're living here, and, and, and you can see uh, uh, up here you have, you have a vision to, to climb some steps. If I could just climb those steps, I'd be better than... Now, now here is the past. This is all the, part, the foundational past, but it brought us here to this present season. If I, can, if I can just get... And here's the vision. Here's one, here's two. He's three. I'm up four steps, and now I have I have had this dream to live in car, on, on carpet. I, I've gone. I, I don't want to live on till carpet anymore. I believe that God's called me to live on pattern carpet. And so now, so God's bringing you from your past to your present season up on the vision. This is the dream that you have. You have you have the dream down here. One day, I just believe God that I'm not going to live on till carpet anymore. Till was great in the '80s, but mm, it's true. and so and, and so I'm on the till. But I believe one day, I, 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 how are you? going to get to that patent carpet? I don't know. I, I, I don't know how I'm going to get, but I have a vision one day to climb some steps. And so now you get your vision, you climb the steps and, and, and you, and now, but, but behind here, behind the ugly curtain, come on, let's, let's just be real. None of us look at that and think that's a pretty curtain. Maybe one of you do. We can donate it. And so, but behind here somewhere, on the other side of this is unrevealed. Like as soon as you can see this, God, God's like we're back here and God's so far ahead of where we're at. And even if we raised the curtain and got to the other side, on the other side of the building, then go into the parking lot, that's where God's at. He is way beyond. He's doing exceedingly abundantly beyond anything that you could ask or think according to the power that is at work in us. So, so God has his power at work in us to be able to achieve the things that he has set aside for us. So, so we're not running ahead of God. We're trying to play catch up. And even as we outlay the vision for 2022, and for some of you, you're going to be like, wow, that's, that's a big dream. God's like, yeah, not really. Just gave you what you can handle this year. It's not all that fantastic. It's not all that great. In fact, I'm going to be honest with you. I think I was t t talking to the pastors this morning. I said, you know, as I was riding out where we're going this year, I've spent so much time in this now 
that I probably see it as reality, even though it's not reality. And as I'm putting it down on the paper, I'm thinking, well, this is just not that great. Why? Because it's starting to become the reality. But it's not. It's out here. But there's a power at work in you. Uh, the thing I love about the church is it's not, the church is not about pastors and leaders, it's about us. It's about the family of God finding out what we can do and how we can do it together. And no matter how insecure you feel and how, how much you feel away, this, 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 this mission that we have is God's mission. And it's God's mission for us. Taking us into areas where we've never been. Our mission as a church, Word of Life, is a church home where we encounter Jesus, when we are planted in Christian community. We see a church where we fulfill our purpose and we are living out God's mission. We're inviting you with us today to get planted. We are inviting you today to get planted and to work with us to live out God's mission. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think according to the power at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. So God's vision is not just beyond us, but it's beyond our generation. Like God thinks in generations, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. God's thinking generationally. A wise man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. God thinks generationally. Most of the church can't think past lunch. But God is thinking generationally. So we've got our past, we've got our present, we've got our vision, we've got our dream, we've got the things that we haven't even seen yet, and God's like, yeah, like that, that's, I'm trying to get you into there. That's where God's trying to get us. The things that He's reserved for us. But He's reserved those things for us. Why? So we can build a launching pad for future generations that our ceiling becomes their floor. That what's great for us becomes normal for them. God wants us to do those exceedingly abundantly beyond we can hard. So we can go, wow, that was awesome. And the young people coming up after us are going to be like, is that all? We want to do something exciting. We are here to reach the generations. And how, how do we do that? By being planted in the house of God. Jesus was in the house of God at eight de- days of age, being dedicated. He was in the house of God at 12. At 12 years of age, they'd lost him and they looked and everywhere. And there he was in the house of God, interacting with leaders, talking with leaders, serving with leaders. At 12, at the age that we discount as being not important, he's there in the temple at 12. We don't see him again until he's 30. So from 12 to 30, Jesus is in the house of God. Luke chapter 4 says, as his custom was, he was in the house. So Jesus was planted in the house from eight days old, 12 to 30, where he's going wisdom, stature, favor with God and faith favor with man. He's growing in the things of God. At 30, he opens up the Word of God and reads from Isaiah, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach, closes the book, hands it back to the intendant and goes, that's me. Today, that scripture has been fulfilled. That guy there is me. We believe that if young people can be found in the house of God, they'll find themselves in the purpose of God when they're in their 30s. We are here to see people planted in the house of the Lord. The Bible promises us that if you get planted from a young age and you grow, that you'll be fresh and flourishing and still bearing fruit. There is no age limit. On the kingdom of God, you can't be too old and you can't be too young. You can just be too unconnected. You can't be too old, you can't be too young, you can just be unplanted. But if you get planted in the house of the Lord, you shall flourish in the courts of our God. And so we have a vision to see word of life to be a church home. A church home, a place that you can call home, that you can belong, where you can encounter Jesus, where you can be planted in Christian community, where you can fulfill God's purpose on your life and you can live out the mission that He has for our generation. Our vision, it works through a strategy. We see it as a house. The first part of our strategy is what we call the front door. We're coming to the house, we're going to walk through the front door. That, that, that's the church home. We want this place to be a place where people can call home. 
where, where you feel like you're home when you get here. And, and like every home, we, we, we want to make it welcoming. We have a spectacular house. We have a spectacular property. This is a spectacular facility. But it's a need of love. You don't have to look around too far to see that it's in need of love. And this year, we want to show some love uh, to the house. We're inviting you to help us make our house more invitable to the emerging generation. Uh, behind this curtain, when, when, when they built this facility, they built a beautiful stained glass window. You can see it from the road. A beautiful stained glass window of Jesus is on the other side of that. And when they built this building, that was a great uh, part of the design. But that was pre video, pre-online, pre all the things that we do today in 2022. And now we can't raise that curtain because the light that comes in through the window would destroy everything that we're trying to do online. Those that are watching online, you wouldn't be able to see anything because of the light coming behind. And then as the day changes, the light changes with it. And so while that was good, this curtain here, as much as I say it's ugly because it is, was never designed to be a backdrop. It was designed to be a curtain. It was supposed to go up and reveal what was behind there. And then when they're done, pull it down. If they did a production, they could do it behind there and they could lift it up and re reveal the choir. It had a purpose, but we're now not using it for its purpose anymore. And so now we have to, we have to reconfigure everything that's behind here so we can lift the curtain. The seats that you sit in are broken, especially if you're on that row there. <laughs> some, some, some rows you get closer to the ground than you are to the roof. And so these pews have served the church well for a long, long time, but they're dated. And now if we want to make our home more welcoming, we need to get new seats. When you go out into the lobby today, you're going to see that there are two seats in the Instagram booth that we've put there. And then we have, we have these little stickers uh, that we want you to fill out. I, I, I am believing, we want you to put a name for somebody that you're believing for to be saved. I am believing whatever the name is there will be saved. And we're going to invite you to put that on the wall of that Instagram booth. And what we want you to do is sit in the seat and, and sit in the seat and imagine them sitting beside you in church. Get a, get a photo, get a faith photo today of you sitting in the seat with your arm around them in church, if that's appropriate, if it's not appropriate, whoever that person is, and get a vision for them being in the house of God. We've got a vision to replace all the seats, but if we replace the seats, we're going to replace the carpet. If we replace the carpet and we replace the seats, we're going to repaint the building, but the building needs new carpet, and the building needs new paint, and the building needs new seats. It, ne it needs a beautiful, this is a great facility. But it's not beautiful anymore. It's like every house that needs an upgrade. And so we're believing God for an upgrade. And in just a few months from now, we're going to take up our heart for the house offering. And I want you from today to start praying about that heart for the house offering. Every seat that we're going to buy costs around about $250 each for the seats. And that's on the cheap end. So about $250 a seat. So, you know, just, if it was me, I, well, it is me, I'm going to buy a seat for myself because somebody paid for my seat. The seat that I sit in today, I didn't buy. Somebody else bought that seat for me. So I'm going to buy a seat for me and I'm going to buy a seat for somebody else. Maybe I want to buy a seat for a few people. Where, where's your faith? Start to pray, God, I want this person to get saved and I want them to sit in this seat. I want to buy a seat that they can sit in. But when you have a building this size, we're not talking about raising $5,000. We're talking about raising $400 and something thousand dollars just for seats. Just for seats. Forget the paint. It's $95,000 just to paint the auditorium. It's $100,000 to paint the auditorium. It's $400 and something thousand dollars for seats. And then you've got to do, it's like $100,000 for everything that needs to happen. So we're going to change all the lighting in here. This is undimmable. It's harsh lighting. It's not great lighting. We're going to change, I think it's like $60,000 to change the lights. And so we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars that we don't have. But how many of you know that God has it? God has that money. God has that money. And so what we're doing as a church, we go, God, I, I, I don't know if we can do this right now. And God's like, come on, man. I'm doing exceedingly, abundantly beyond anything you hope or think or dare to imagine. You're trying to renovate the building. I'm going way beyond that. We're playing catch up with God. 
and it's His power at work in us. I'm not asking you to do something that you can't do. I'm asking you to do what God can do through you. Why don't you ask God, God, what can you do through me? What have you done through me before? What can you do through me? Now, God, use me to be a facilitator of the vision and to make it a reality. And then one day in the near future, we're going to be sitting in this building. You're going to be like, whoa, I really like this. And you're going to invite people that you've never invited not because you don't want them to get saved, but because you're like, oh, I can't invite them to church. It just feels weird. So we want to make a church home. So we're going to pray about all those things. Our parking lot needs repair. The parking lot's broken. It's a, f- a phenomenal facility. We are a blessed people, but it just needs some love. We just need to give it some love. Anybody want to give your house some love? Give me a wave of your hands right now. Come on. Just say, we want to love on our house. You're a little quiet. You're making me nervous. (laughs) Then there's the living room. The living room is where we encounter Jesus. The living room is our Sunday church services. And so we have have a vision to... uh, can continue to add to our church services. If we grow like we were growing in 2021, then we'll probably move to two services for this service. We're looking to be able to engage our Spanish service and our Amharic service in a different way. We're looking to add more translation in these services on a Sunday. We're launching tonight our youth and young adult service. Can I I just say this is your pastor? I have no vision for a youth group. For all you like, well, we want to have a youth group. We're not having a youth group. We're not going to have a youth group. We're going to have a youth church. We're not going to have a youth ministry. We're going to have young people who minister. Five o'clock on a Sunday night is going to be church. It's going to be as important as this church service. It's going to be run by young people. It's going to be led by young people. It's going to be ministered to by young people. We've already seen this morning that they have the capacity to pray the prayer of faith. They have the ability to lead. They are not the church of tomorrow. They are the church of today. It's the church right here, right now. So we're going to add a service, a five o'clock service every Sunday night for our youth and college. Soon we're going to be launching a junior high ministry. Our middle schoolers need, at right now, our middle schoolers are all serving in the children's ministry. But we want to have something for them on a Sunday morning that they can be ministered to. We're going to, we're going to increase our children's ministry and improve our children's facility. And children, uh, Pastor Jeanette was talking to me last night and she talked about how a kindergartner, everyone say kindergartner, invited their friend to church and brought their friend from kindergarten to church. Which is more than some adults have done for a long time. Just throwing it out there. They actually brought a friend, invited, put them in the vehicle, probably because they can't drive a car in the kindergarten age. And brought them to church. And then their family's now coming to church. So we're improving and working on our children's ministry. That's the living room of the house. That's where we invite everybody into the house. The living room of the house is where you can invite anybody and everybody and it's comfortable. So that's why there's certain things that we don't do on a Sunday morning. People are like, I want to do this in worship and I want to do that in worship. And can I do that? No, you can't. Why? Because it's, it's, it's good in the bedroom, but it's not good in the living room. It's a level of intimacy that you want to have with God that's great somewhere else, but not great here. Because on Sunday, it's everybody together. The unsaved, the saved, the newly saved, the people that have been saved forever. It's the living room. Then there's the dining room. The dining room is where we get planted in Christian community. We've asked Pastor Waldy to lead our small groups. We have over 50 small groups right now operating in our church, which is great because that's the most that we've ever had. And so that's continuing to grow. I'm believing that it won't be long to have 100 small groups operating in our church. And that's the way that we make a large church small. If you can download the Word of Life app and get it on your phone, there's a whole list of groups that you can get involved in. And this is our way to pastorally care for you. We don't want to get big and then you feel like you're forgotten. This is never about numbers. It's always about health. And healthy things grow. But the church only grows when you're healthy. You matter to God. You're not insignificant. You're not a number. You're not just a name. You are, you are a vitally important part of this house. And we want to make you feel loved and feel connected. 
And so that's the dining room of the house. The kitchen is where we fulfill our purpose. That's where we throw you a tea towel and we say to you, hey, help wash the dishes. Or we open the dishwasher and we say, hey, can you put the dishes away? The kitchen is where we serve and I'm inviting everybody to get on a team. We need to all volunteer. Every one of us needs to find our fit and serve somewhere, whether it be on the door and be like, welcome home and out welcoming homing Jackie. I'm not sure that's humanly possible. <laughs> or whether it's serving in children's ministry or if it's singing. It was great to see Jessica on the stage today. And the girls that have served in praise and worship and the band. Find your fit, whether it be up there doing all these, changing the slides or helping create the slides. Where it, Find your fit. We need you in the kingdom. It's translating a language. We need you to be involved. And we're calling you to get plugged in and to serve in the house of God. So we go from front door to the living room, to the dining room, to the kitchen, and then to the bedroom. That's where we all belong. The, when, when you have a bedroom, you say, this is my house. When you're hanging in the living room, it's like, that's somebody else's house. But as soon as you move to the bedroom, you're like, this is my house. And we want you to make Word of Life your house, where you live on God's mission. We see God's mission funneling through three major uh, funnels or courses or dynamics, the church, the community, and the kingdom. We see word of God flowing in the church uh, where we are honoring the legacy given to us by Pastor Cova and all the other generations that have gone before us. Next year, 2023, word of life will celebrate 75 years. It'll be our 75th birthday next year, and we're going to celebrate and make that, make that big. You, you help build the church through prayer meetings. We're moving our prayer meeting from Friday night to Thursday night. It's going to be on Zoom and we're asking all languages, all different representations of our church to come and pray together on Thursday night. The thing good about prayer is you don't need to pray in English if English is not your first language. God doesn't speak English. He, he speaks God. He speaks faith. And you can pray in whatever language you want, the prayer of faith, but we're inviting you to pray with us on Thursday nights. We're going to have strategic prayer days strategic prayer nights, strategic prayer seasons. We just had one last month praying together every Wednesday night. We're going to have ministry nights where this is the bedroom where we can dance and you can express who you are because that night is not about inviting your unsafe friends. That night is where the family of God hang out in the bedroom where we get intimate with God. The month of April, I've invited uh, uh, four or five of my friends to come, lay hands on us, see a move of the Holy Spirit, experience the power of God. I've got David David Hall coming from Australia, a man who moves in the power of God. I've got Pastor Kent Muncy in Chicago who's going to move powerfully in the prophetic and the power of God. I've got Jonathan Brozozog from uh, Minneapolis who moves in the power of God. We're going to see God move on. We're going to see a visitation this year of the Holy Spirit when He can change us. We can change our world. Our women's ministry is being relaunched. There's a brunch on March 12. Pastor Anna's going to be sharing a vision. We're going to do a men's conference on the Sunday, uh, Saturday morning just before Father's Day. I got a friend of mine, Pastor Steve Kennedy from Australia, who's going to speak at that and then speak on Father's Day. Our senior ministries is going to continue to expand. I've spoken to Pastor Dan when I first got here. I said, I want our seniors ministry not to be a babysitting service for the seniors of our church. I want it to be an outreach how can we reach out to the nursing homes? How can we reach out to the seniors around, the baby boomers are entering? that gener How can we minister to them? We're taking a trip to, to the ark, the, the actual ark. Not the actual ark, but similar, the similar ark. And so you can go on that trip, and they're doing a, a summer camp here. Bible quiz continues to grow. We're building the church. We're building the church together. We have a, a, a vision for our community. Word of Life Christian Academy, expanding and increasing what we do is our school. Our school has a vision to grow. We're just about to relaunch some of the things that we're doing for that, some of the programs they're going to offer. We're going to offer programs in the arts. We're going to have music. We're going to have art. We're going to have drama. We're going to have dance. We're going to continue to build our sport. How many of you know we need Christian education in our community right now? We want Word of Life Christian Academy to continue to grow. If you're a part of the alumni of Word of Life Christian Academy, you're going to get an alert soon, invited to join us with making what we've got even better than what we have. And this year, we're going to launch Life Care. It's going to be our ministry to the community. 
where we can start to feed our community, clothe our community, minister to the broken in our community, provide counseling to our community. And we're going to release, we're going to start a business leaders network where we go to the other end. And we, we minister to business leaders and help entrepreneurs and help kingdom builders with their finances. And, and so we have a lot of things that we want to see with our community to grow. And the last thing, and Russell can come and play something romantic behind me. <laughs> we see it in our church, we see it in our community, and we see it in our kingdom. Kingdom is everything that we do that's beyond this wall. So we have a vision for missions. We haven't stopped our heart. This is a part of our legacy as a church to be a mission-minded church. If you have mission pledges, we're going to ask you to stay faithful in your pledge. If you've never given to missions, we're going to ask you to think about and to be committed to missions. We, we support over 80 missionaries around the world. Uh, we've just taken on a project of supporting a young man that works for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes and uh, supporting him on a monthly basis. Uh, we're putting more money into the young girl that's in Russia. Uh, we're supporting the church in El Salvador. I think so far to date, we've put something like $40,000 into their building project. We have a goal to put another $20,000 into that building project this year. The pastor just wrote me an email the other day saying, thank you, we're moving forward. We're going to take a team there in November. We're going to Iquitos in Peru, where my sister-in-law and her husband have a great church. Church is all up and down the Amazon. We're taking a team in there in August of this year uh, into Iquitos of Peru. So we're going to keep our missionary focus where we look to do things globally. We are going to expand our Bible college. We have a, we have a plan to have a full-time uh, Bible college on campus. Um, Anna, uh, while she's doing her doctorate and helping run the church and all those things, is the dean uh, of Ascent Bible College. And we've spoken to Rob Roden about bringing Ascent Bible College and having a campus here. And Pastor Anna, Pastor Waldy are going to work with them to have a, a Bible college. We're going to take our global uh, Bible college courses and put them in to our small group structure. And so we're going to be training you in the Bible, but then training people in ministry and then opening our doors for all around the world to say, come here and be trained and be equipped to be church planners, to be kingdom builders, to go way beyond. We've got the facility, we've got the room and we've got the people. And then summer this year, we're going to do a youth conference. We're going to do a major youth conference. We're combining with two or three other churches and here throughout summer, we're going to do a, a few days where we invite young people to come and see the power of God move and train up young people to go into the mission field. So this year, we're inviting you to live planted. We're inviting you to live planted by faith. Pray for us. Believe God with us. Walk out of here today going, we can do this. We can do this. Grab this vision booklet, pray over it. Take this home with you, pray over it. Learn about who we want to be. This is not about who we are, this is who we want to be. Pray over it. Ask God, how, how can I be involved in this? What can I do? What can I do to make this vision become a reality? We're inviting you to live planted by faith. We're inviting you to live planted in the house. Make Word of Life your church home. If you haven't done our membership course here, then do our membership course. Uh, be a part of the membership of this house. Be a giver. Be a tither. Uh, attend on Sunday. Bring your friends. Make this house your house. Live planted on team. Find a fit. Find your place. And then serve your heart out and then live planted through investment. Can you pray about what you should give? Can you pray about that? I, I, I never want giving to be a burden for anybody because giving has never been a burden for me. The only time giving ever becomes a burden is if you don't think about it. But if you can think about it and you can get a figure in your head from God, even if it's a stretching figure. How many have ever had a stretching figure from God? That you're like, is that really God? I ate a lot of pizza last night. Maybe it's the pizza. It's a stretching figure. But even when you get the stretching figure, the, the, the figure shouldn't be something, and I'm, I, I'm never going to do this, demand from you to do. Because if I demand it, then you give out a grudging obligation. When you get it, then you can give out a generosity. And you can give cheerfully. I would just say to you, if you don't give anything, start giving something. 
if you've been giving faithfully for a long time but never thought about increasing it, why don't you think, well, what else can I do? What can I do? Could I put $5 more a week in? Could I put, t- what, what is it? What can you do? If you've never tithed, maybe now is the time to start tithing. When it comes to our heart for the house or missions, what does God want you to do? When it comes for heart for the house, I would say this, as you like, man, seats are $250 each. I don't get two, that's $500. You may say, I don't have $500 in my bank account. I don't have that money. And then God's making you feel like you should give it. Then sell something. Come on, all of you have a little brother. <laughs> or an older sister. If you need an older sister, I've got an older sister. I'll sell her for 200 bucks. <laughs> She's watching online. Sorry, okay. $200 is way too low. 210 That's American dollars. That's like 5000 Australia, so that's not bad. But that, when God gives you that vision, then He'll give you the provision. We're not stressing about it. We're not worried. We're just believing God together. How can God use you? And then we're asking you to live planted in mission. Invite lost people to Christ. Talk to people at work. Get excited about your church. Some of you, look at, look at me, some of you have been so hurt and so beaten up through past leadership. Some of you have been so hurt, so wounded by things people have said yesterday. But that's in the past. I'm inviting you to get out of the past. Walk through this present season. Get a vision for something new God can do. What can God do in you that He's never done in you before? God wants to use you. He's not done with you yet. Grannies, grandmas, great-grandmas, great-granddads, God's not done with you. It's, the, the season's not over for you. God wants to use you. We're inviting you to live on mission with us. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your church. We thank you for word of life. We thank you, Lord God, for the men and women that have built this church and made it a great church. We thank you for the legacy of all the previous pastors and leaders that have been here. And we thank you for the legacy of Pastor uh, Pastor Kova and his wife, Lord God, as they've built everything that we have right now. And Lord God, you've handed that responsibility into our hands right now, that we are here to steward what you gave to them as a vision and a dream. And Lord God, we pray that we would take it way beyond anything that we could hope or think or dare to imagine. We want to be able to tap into things that we haven't seen yet. Lord God, we anticipate, Lord God, as we come towards 2023, as we stand on this platform next year, Lord God, You willing, Lord God, we just believe, Lord God, that what You call us to do next year would blow our minds, that we'd look at all the things that You called us to do this year, Lord, next year, and we'd say that was so easy and that You would stretch us in the future. Lord God, I thank You for the men and women of God that have invested their life into this church over decades, over years. They've been through the high waters and the low. They've been through the up and through the down. They've been through the difficult and they've been through the blessing. Lord God, some of the men and women that have been here in this church right now have already built churches in the previous times. They've pastored and led churches, Lord God. I pray that You'd stir them up with a fresh revelation for Your Kingdom. Lord God, that You're not done with them yet. I pray for every young person in the house, Lord God, that You haven't even begun Your work in them. Lord God, stir it up today. And Lord God, everything in between. Lord God, I pray that You'd stir our hearts and knit us in a spirit of faith. Lord God, to do amazing things. In Jesus' Name. In Jesus' Name. In Jesus' Name. Can you give Him a great round of applause right now? Can you stand to your feet? I'm going to ask Pastor Walter. We are over time. And uh, pray for us tonight as we launch our youth service. Social, 5 o'clock if you know teenagers, high school, it's not for junior high, it's high school and older. High school, college age, young adult. If you know anybody, call them, tell them to come and visit. I'm preaching tonight. And uh, and we're so excited about what God is going to do. And uh, we love you. We value you. We can't do this on our own. We're inviting you to be with us, to live planted 
If you're here today and you're not a Christian, you've never prayed, you've never asked Jesus to come into your life, it's the best prayer that you can pray. Uh, we have pastors down the front here this morning and we're going to hang out. And uh, if you haven't got your life right with God, just come and talk to one of us and say, hey man, my life is far from God. I need to get it right with Him. Come and talk to us and we'll lead you in a prayer and get you on that journey. That's our heart is to see people find Jesus. That's the best thing that we can do as a church. We love you. Anna and I love you. We appreciate you. It is a blessing to be called to lead this church. An absolute blessing. I thank God every day. This is, I don't know about for you, this is the most exciting season. This is the most exciting season for my life to date. I say to Anna every day, this is just an amazing season. God has blessed us with amazing people. You're an amazing church. We love you and we appreciate you.